Hello, I'm Abyex, and welcome back to another story time video. This is a lot of people's favourite series that if you haven't seen before, is one where it's me live here in the flesh, hello, or at least it's someone who looks like me, or someone who has kidnapped me, they've, uh, you know, broken into my house at night, they've taken off my skin, and now they're wearing a toy cat skin suit. But like, whichever solution it is, either way, I'm here to talk about public transport, because a lot of people hear my stories about public transport on streams or in Let's Plays, and they go, yeah, that is something where I, I hate that as well, toy cat, and I figured given I've had so many weird experiences over the past few years, uh, you know, across London, because that is my home city, both on the tube, uh, buses, and sometimes even in suburban rail and stuff like that, I figured why not share all of the services from public transport, because maybe in your place you use it a lot and you've experienced this too, or maybe you don't have public transport or you don't use it because it's for the other people there and you want to feel good about driving. Either way, I hope you get something from this video. Make sure you like it if you do, because it helps out the channel a lot, and honestly, it feeds the wife and kids. If you don't do it, it's just, you know, they die, and who wants that? No one wants that. So yeah, feed feed the wife and kids with a good old like on the video. Uh, you, you, you haven't liked the video yet, you know, statistically speaking, 11 out of 12 of you have not hit that like button, make sure you do that. So begging for likes, even though it's not important, that's YouTube 2018, that's what I'm here for. But no, seriously, let's talk about public transport. So like I said, I've been on public transport for 40 hours last month, according to Google, and all of that is outside of the busy times. I try to travel at like really vague times, and the upside of that is there's usually lots of space. The downside is that there's usually a few weird things that go down, like the uh, first thing, which was literally something recently that happened, that I just wanted to share, because it was something that like started like, it was like a roller coaster of emotions, right? So what it started as is, uh, you know, I was sitting on the train, I was going all the way to the end of the line, so we're talking like an hour and a half journey or something, and it's like, okay, just gonna settle in and relax. I didn't even use my phone because it was on low battery, so I was just sat there the whole time, just staring forward, like you have to do sometimes, and uh, you know, somewhere near the end, like three stops before, uh, this guy gets on, he's, he's, you know, wearing like a crutch, and then his girlfriend gets on, she's wearing a crutch too. Uh, they have some real issues where they're stumbling a little bit, maybe they're drunk or something, I, I don't know what the whole story is, um, but like, you know, she, he's helping her a lot, and it's a really cute, like, kind of couple thing, they seem like they get on really well, uh, by the way, they're in, like, their 40s, maybe, their 50s, and, uh, while they're on the train, the guy drinks a single can of beer, and it's like, okay, I guess you gotta do that, uh, it's, I think it's against the rules of the particular train, but whatever, you know, we all break rules from time to time, I get it, man, and, uh, you know, like, so nothing going wrong there, bit weird that he's drinking on public transport, bit weird that him and his girlfriend both have a crutch and both seem a bit weird, but, you know, things happen like that. And as I'm just sitting there staring, as we come very close to the last stop, uh, what actually ends up happening is I'm just staring there, and he's like, what are you looking at, mate? And it's that, it's, it's the worst phrase you can hear from a stranger, what are you looking at? Because it's like, uh, you, you know, what, what, what can you even take from that? Like, you? I'm looking at what's going on there. There's nothing you can say in response to that that makes sense. Uh, the, the best thing I could try, I was just like, I'm on a train, man. That's literally what I said, like, I probably should have said something to just make him go away, but I was just like, yeah, I'm on a train, dude, and, uh, <laughs> the dude immediately goes like, oh, really? Really? And he, like, comes over to my seat, he, like, blocks me in, because, like, it's seats facing forwards, and then it's just like, uh, okay, so now I'm, like, literally trapped in my seat with a old man who's got a, you know, kind of, a, an old-ish man, he's got a beer in his hand, and he's just like, uh, that is my girlfriend over there, and I'm like, that's, that's good. <laughs> like, I probably could have, uh, you know, seduced, uh, deduced that from all the things going on. And he's like, I saved her life recently. And I'm like, oh, wow, I wish I could be as good to my girlfriend as you. Because when strangers, especially drunk strangers, especially strangers you have no intention of seeing again, just try and make them feel good so they'll go away. And uh, he's like, yeah, and I saved her by doing this, this, this. He goes through a whole bunch of steps. And I'm like, oh, that's really good, man. And then I'm like getting up to go. And he's like, by the way, before you go, mate, because uh, like apparently we're friends now. That's, that's where this relationship has shifted. He's like, have you got any money, uh, I could really do with like a taxi from the station or something, and I'm like, nah, I only got cards on me, and he, you know, he makes a joke about, oh, I could take some contactless maybe, you got any food on there either? And it's like, whoa, 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 this is like a, you know, mildly expensive train to use, uh, you get on here, you know, you're drinking, you got, what, what is this, what is this interaction? I didn't understand it, but it was the sort of thing where I was just like, at the end, we're like, this guy, he's like, seems to be really comprehensive, he's like, oh, you're going, I'm, and he seems sad about it, and it's like, if this is how you make friends, you're making friends wrong, and it seems like he, even when the train stopped he didn't seem to get off so maybe that's just his thing he's like a train man he goes on he makes exciting stories for people but to me at least that was just like oh my god this guy um because again when someone just like threatens you locks you in your seat things get a bit scary for a bit but uh less scary than i guess yeah <laughs> moving on from scary to like kind of uh, i guess gross is a good word for it um obviously 
now that the uh, London Underground has something called the Night Tube, so we call the Underground the Tube in London because the trains are shaped like a tube. I like them the best, like they look the best, but they're like objectively the most cramped on the inside. Anyway, we have something called the Night Tube. The trains run at night now on 24 hours during weekends. And as you can imagine, if you run for 24 hours during the weekend and you allow drunk passengers or like, I guess people getting back from like excessive nights to go home, they do things on the underground. And sometimes that includes vomiting. So, uh, you know, the fir first story I think was just like pretty late at night. Maybe it was accidental vomit, but I just saw like a really big splash of vomit in between the seats like so it spread a little bit onto one seat and pretty far onto the other one and you know this is like a, okay everyone in the carriage makes a big radius around it like avoiding it because it smells a little bit and you, you know I don't need to talk about vomit too much I'm sure you all understand that vomit is undesirable we all we all good in that like vomit not good don't want on underground okay we, we're all in agreement. I'm glad we're there so the thing about this that made it so weird is that at one of the stops because we're going to Heathrow Airport uh, the underground goes there Fun fact, save money on the, let's not give London tips. So <laughs> uh, basically I'm on the train to the airport and uh, you know, like uh, these these Asian, like free Asian women get on and two of them like sit across from the puke and the third one sits like on the same seat as it, just angled slightly sideways. There is this much of a gap between her leg and it. Like she knows it's there because she's angled herself sideways. And it's like, there are so many other free seats around here. Like there is, you know, it's like, it's not a busy time of day uh, because I don't travel at busy times of days. It's like, you could have sat in another, another part of the carriage. Like there's more seats just over there. There's all these options. And she's just like, oh yeah, vomit on the See, that's a normal occurrence over here and it's like I cannot understand to this day why you would choose to sit on the vomit seat when there are other seats available even if the train was full I would stand but I can understand like maybe you've got weak legs maybe you want to be near your friends who have sat across me to, to doom you but I I just I, I, I can't think about a single good reason why in a nearly empty train you would sit on the vomit seat I it just doesn't make any sense no sense made whatsoever because it's also a priority seat that the vomit was on it's worth mentioning that vomit was taking up you know the seat that's meant to be there for like old ladies and stuff so it's like and she was like a young ish woman so it's like what you, you're doing everything wrong you have broken the I sat there the whole 20 minutes and I'm like this person they don't make any sense it's like the people who sit next to you and like when you've got a bench and there's four seats and like you know they're a serial killer because they're right next to you same thing there where it's like something is some wires are wrongly crossed they they don't think about some things in their head and a similar thing this is like just a single situation, I guess. But riding the, uh, I think it was like the Jubilee Line or something, the silver one, it goes through Canary Wharf, which is a business district. So I get on there thinking like, well, I mean, this is a pretty nice thing. Uh, you know, like, this is a pretty reasonable station. It's a really big one. Look inside sometime, it's delightful. I have to go there for like an hour to the other end to get home. And one of the weird things that happened on this line was uh, the carriage that I was in, I, I don't know if it was there the whole time or if I only noticed it about 10 minutes in because someone threw up or something, but the whole floor was vomiting and as the train moves after the stop, it slides down because obviously there's like momentum. And basically what I'm saying here is we had to play the floor was lava, except the floor was not lava. The floor was vomit. <laughs> the floor of this tube carriage was vomit and given that it was like, you know, like 12, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., so 4 a.m. maybe, it was one of the a.m. hours and it's just like, okay, how, you know, getting out of this carriage is going to be near impossible. I'm going to have to like slide on the stuff. It was pretty wild. It was pretty ridiculous. And I have had this happen not once. Not, you know, because this is like two vomit stories. I've also had it happen on a bus. Have to play like Flora's Lava, jump over stuff there. And I'm just saying, the amount of vomit you'll see if you go at weird hours on the London ground is like surprisingly high. <laughs> I don't know if that's, I don't know what to take from that, honestly. Like, uh, people vomit on the underground and that's just a thing. I'm surprised. Like, I've heard the New York subway is worse. Like, homeless people just defecate in there. Haven't seen that yet. But honestly, a part of me is like, you know, could that be much worse? At least that doesn't slide down towards you. And yeah, I have lots of horrifying uh, thoughts about other people vomiting on the thing. And that's just a weird thing. A, a quick little one here. I still don't know quite what I think about this because um, fun fact about London and uh, I guess continental Europe, even though the UK is an island and uh, you might think like therefore, you know, it's not much traffic going from Europe through to uh, the UK. There is a high speed underground tunnel that links the centre of London to the centre of Paris in like an hour and 40 minutes or something. And because of that, there's a fair number of French people that come over some weekends just for the day or for the weekend or something. I don't know for sure. And one of these French people, uh, this is gonna sound like really anti-French propaganda. If you're French, I probably like you. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm lying. We probably, I, you probably don't know me. I don't know you, but <laughs> there's a chance I would like you if I got to know you. But this French guy um, had just the weirdest uh, like reaction to everyone around him. He's like, you know, stranger on the tube, I'm gonna hit them up. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh, don't, there's weird people like that everywhere, toy cat. But no, this guy, 
he was hitting up the girl in like the weirdest kind of way and he was sure he was doing a good job like maybe what it is is just most french dudes who hit on women in london like it just goes well because like I, isn't it a well-known thing that like french accents do well in some countries maybe it's america i i'm not sure but it's like a thing but like she is clearly like just trying to scoot away from him and just being like oh how about that and like he, he doesn't seem to understand it and then at one point he's like uh, he looks around and he's like does this does this go like what, what's the deal for her? and i'd feel like oh, dude. <laughs> and what for, one time i saved a french man uh, a little bit of grace. He didn't believe me, of course, and then, like, another person was like, mm-hmm, and then it was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this situation now. So, pro tip, no matter what ethnicity you are, probably shouldn't hit on strangers on the trip, even if it is, uh, like, 11 p.m. or something like that. So, uh, final, uh, weird story here. This is awkward toy cat IRL, um, but I want to tell this story because it, I've had, um, so, there's a particular stretch of London that, for some reason, I just have so many weird memories off. I've been stuck on the tube there for two hours because there was a signal fault. Just standing up on your phone. Uh, no internet, by the way. I've had a lot of weird experiences on this line, but the one that still sticks there to this day, uh, again, I have all of these, like, horrific experiences. Uh, if, you, if you're curious, by the way, the line is the circle line. It's, it's the worst line in London because it doesn't make us... I could talk about the circle line, but today, I wanted to talk about Awkward Twig Cat IRL because I met a girl at an event. I really want to make this non-specific because there's no chance that she would find this, but in case. And um, we got on kind of well at said event. Like, you know, I I wasn't expecting to meet people and it's like, oh, hey, hey, this, this, that. And I'm like, that, that, this, this, that, that. Oh, this, this, loss or whatever. You know, you get the point. I'm talking simlish for some reason, but um, interesting, uh, you know, like, and then like, you know, we go home and it's like, oh, we're going in the same direction. You know, you have to catch the circle line too. And um, yeah, so uh, we, we get on the circle line to go home. And while we're on there, again, we're chatting. It's going really well. We're like just having a, a good back and forth. Talking on the underground, really impressive beat if you can imagine it. Uh, if you can manage it, by the way, because there's just this loud as you go between stations. That was a very accurate noise. Um, but you, you know, there's this huge noise. The so talking is really hard. And uh, but you know, me and, me and her are getting on quite well. Um, this is during the days of single toy cat. I should mention. Um, and basically. Uh, what what happens is uh, she mentions at some point like it's a shame that I'm just going home now Like I've gone to London I don't know how far she came from and I'd really love to see some stuff and I'm just like not too sure about what and uh, I'm like, you know, actually I think I'm gonna spend the rest of, the day of London. And she's like, oh, yeah, that that sounds really cool I wish I could do the same and for some reason something about that doesn't click in my head that she's like It would be cool if you took me with you or whatever or like if you could do the thing because I was just like Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that actually I'm gonna I'm gonna like, you know get off here and do that and she's like, oh, yeah that, that that sounds like you're gonna have a lot of fun today. And again, in this whole time, I'm just like, yeah, I, I really, I really am. I'm, I'm looking forward to maybe doing this and then that and then that. And she's like, sounds really fun. Wish I could come along or something. And I don't know why none of that in my head to the, like, it didn't click at all. Because most people, when they ask to like, you know, do something, it's like an explicit thing. But in this case, it's like, I believe, again, maybe I'm wrong. I believe there was like a clear thing of like, uh, maybe you can uh, listen to that and assume your own thing of like, uh, I'd love to come and see London. Maybe you could show me it. Cause obviously strangers seeing London, it's like a big daunting thing. Going around by yourself, super, super terrifying. And it was like, uh, I would have loved to hang around. You know, I'm not saying this was like a, a weird date thing, but it's like, a, would have loved to get to know the person better. Would have loved to hang out for a day because I was just kind of chilling in London the rest of the day. And it's like, I don't under, cause I clarify, I live on the outer edges. So it's like a journey getting in and out in case you're curious as to why I live in London or not. And it's just one of those things where I think to this day, like, oh, uh. <laughs> I at least should have, like, said something. At least should have, like, given, because, you know, like, when, if someone asks, like, hey, I'd love to do that, and then you say, you can do this. Here's how you do it by yourself. It seems, like, super, super uh, weird and, like, you're missing the point. And to this day, I, I just can't stop thinking, like, oh, man. I <laughs> I must have came across, like, I just really wanted her to with me. And I, I don't know why. But that is that is the worst uh, moment I've had in the underground. There's there's a lot of other weird stories. Again, I, most of it's just like, oh, trains get delayed. Isn't that a crazy thing when you're so, sat there? There's no subsurface internet, so you're just kind of trapped. Uh, there's a lot of other weird things where like, oh, trains have just been sat there at the station. You know, there's all there's all these weird kind of stories. There's all these fun facts about it. I'd love to make a whole London Underground video sometime, maybe on IBX Two Cat. But for now, I just want to say I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it, or got something from it, or maybe you just, re you know, you sit there and you think, I'm glad I'm in a car. There's no, there's no awkward situations in cars. There's no floor is lava vomit on cars. There's, there's none of that happening at all. And you know what? I'd have to agree with you. Um, 
But yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it at least a little bit. And I guess I'll see you all in the next one. Do you want to see more Storytime Toy Cat? Or is this the worst thing in the world? Let me know. But goodbye.